Hello and welcome to the Noble Network Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited you're here to learn about six great schools. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to a specific school or schools by writing their name in with your question, or you can leave a question for any and all of our representatives to answer about their programs. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening for Noble students. We hope you've already enjoyed a presentation um, the session this morning and that you have signed up for um, the session that follows this one as well. This presentation, like all of the presentations, are being recorded. They're going to be available within about a week's time at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash noble. I'm now excited to turn it over to our presenters and welcome our very first school to kick us off today. We're going to be hearing from Purdue University. Am I sharing? Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining. My name is Susie Sabernick, and I am Senior Assistant Director of Admissions at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. So our numbers, Purdue is a large public research university. We see You can see we're almost 46,000 total students and almost 35,000 undergraduates. Uh, we are the land grant university for the state of Indiana. So the majority of our students do come from Indiana. However, we have students from all 50 states as well as about 125 countries around the world. Um, after Indiana, you can see Illinois is our next largest state. So we do have a large amount of students who come from the Chicagoland area down to Purdue. Uh, we are about two hours south of downtown Chicago, so very easy uh, for you to get here, um, easy to go home on the weekends if you'd like. Um, but again, because we have students from all over, you will get to meet students from everywhere. So our application process, when you apply to Purdue, you will apply using the common application. In the application, you are able to self-report both your grades and your test scores. So if you do choose to self-report grades, you need to make sure that you're including freshman, sophomore, junior year courses and grades along with your senior year schedule. It's very important to include that senior year schedule. Um, we need to see that information to ensure that you are completing our subject matter requirements. Um, with test scores, we are going to be test flexible again for the fall of 2022. So test flexible for us means if you are able to take the SAT or ACT, we would like for you to have those scores either sent to us from the testing agency or self-reported through the application. However, being test flexible um, with COVID situations, if you're not able to sit for a test and you don't have test scores, we will still consider you fully for admission. Uh, when you apply to Purdue, you do apply directly to a college and then to a major. So we do direct admit to our programs. We require just one essay from the Common App, and then there are two Purdue-focused essay questions, and then the application fee, or we do have a fee waiver request. So these are the 11 different schools and colleges, and I would really encourage you to check out the website so you can really start doing some research to ensure that if you do, apl do apply to Purdue, that you are going to be applying to the major that you are truly interested in. So you'll apply to a college and then choose a major from that college. Engineering is a little different. So if you're interested in engineering, you do apply to our College of Engineering. However, your choice of major is going to be first year engineering. So all students will go through a common first year curriculum and then sophomore year is when you go into your specific major. Exploratory studies is our undecided option, so if you're not sure what you'd like to study, we don't want to force you to pick a major. It's a great place to start and really allows you to learn more about the majors at Purdue. So then once you choose a major, you'll move uh, from exploratory into that major. 
the app goes live August 1st. November 1st is our very important early action deadline. It is also the deadline to be considered for merit-based scholarships as well as the Honors College. It's our priority application deadline for the computer science professional flight and nursing majors. I would also add engineering in there as well as those are the four most competitive programs. Um, we released decisions January 15th. January 15th is also the early action, or I'm sorry, the regular decision deadline. Um, late March is the latest that you would hear a decision from us, and then the offer of admission is held until May 1st, so students have until that day to decide if they want to attend Purdue. Uh, we don't require students to live on campus. However, about 95% of freshmen do. Overall, we're about 45% of undergraduates live on campus. We have 17 different residence halls, so a lot of different options uh, for students to choose from. And May 5th is the housing contract deadline. Um, regarding financial aid, there's a great financial aid estimator, so your families and you can go on their website and plug in numbers to see the type of aid you could expect. Um, again, March 1st is, or I'm sorry, November 1st is the um, important deadline uh, to make sure that you would be in automatic consideration for merit-based scholarships. Several of our colleges also have a supplemental scholarship, so if you've applied to a college that offers that, you would receive additional information on submitting that application. Uh, March 1st is the priority deadline to submit the FAFSA form. And then the financial aid office typically sends out notification, um, usually starting mid-February. So you'll have that whole financial aid package well prior to that May 1st deadline. And of course, Purdue's a big school, so a lot of great things you can get involved in outside of class. We have a thousand clubs and organizations. Um, we offer a certificate in entrepreneurship. So if you have an interest in that area, no matter what your major, you can work to earn that certificate. Um, we have a great maker space on campus, the Bechtel Innovation Design Center. Um, again, the Honors College, uh, music activities, uh, research, um, and of course, we are a Big Ten school. Um, contact information. So be sure to check our website for more information as well as visit opportunities. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susie, for starting us off and presenting on Purdue today. All right, we're heading to our next school. We'll be hearing from St. Louis University. Hello, I'm Stephanie Sapansky with St. Louis University. Um, can you, I, okay, perfect. Everyone can see my screen as well. So um, I am here with my colleague, Richard Brown. So we would love for you to ask us questions. He would be happy to answer them throughout the presentation. So first and foremost, St. Louis University is a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit school. We are located in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as in Madrid, Spain. So we actually have two campuses that you can go to either one for all four years, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but we are an institution with over 8,000 undergraduates. Um, we are the second oldest Jesuit school, and we are the first university west of the Mississippi. So we are home to a lot of first here at St. Louis University. While we um, are located within the city of St. Louis, we really have the best of both worlds. So you have a traditional college campus with everything that the city of St. Louis has to offer. So lots of different options there. Now, First and foremost, we are a Jesuit school. And so what it means to be a Jesuit school is really a particular philosophy of education. So educating the whole person, mind, body, and spirit, being a person for others, academic excellence, and social justice. Now there are 27 different Jesuit schools throughout the United States, and we all live out our mission a little bit differently. Here at St. Louis University, we really live it out through being men and women for and with others. And so we do that through service. So last year, our faculty, staff, and students contributed over 1.98 million hours of community service. And we are actually ranked number two in the country for community service and engagement. And so that is, I think that just really kind of gives you a good idea of who we are as a campus community. Of course, we don't um, require you to do service, but if that's something that interests you, you definitely have an opportunity for that. While we are a Catholic institution, please know we are home to all faiths, and the Jesuit, uh, the Jesuit philosophy really just wants you to continue on in whatever faith tradition you are on, and we'll help you within that pathway. 
Now, St. Louis University has 11 colleges and nearly 100 different undergraduate majors for you to choose from. All of the majors are direct entry. So if you knew you wanted aviation or biomedical engineering or communication, you can go directly into any of those programs. You can also start in all of our colleges still deciding. So engineering, business, public health, health sciences, nursing, all of those you can start still deciding, well, not nursing, but all of those you can start still deciding um, and you are on your pathway to graduate within four years. Some of our popular majors are, I would say our six year doctorate of physical therapy, our biology pre-med, business, aerospace engineering, communication, our direct entry nursing program, flight science and psychology are all some of our very popular programs. Now there are three programs that are what we call direct entry only, meaning you absolutely have to apply as that major as an incoming first year student. Um, you can always transfer out of it, you can't transfer into them. And that is our direct entry bachelor's of science in nursing, our six year doctorate of physical therapy and our five year masters of occupational therapy. So if you're thinking about any of those majors, we would encourage you to apply by December 1st as that major, you can always transfer out, you just can't transfer in. Now, one of the other things we always like to talk about is that our majors do have hands-on learning experiences, such as internships, clinicals, and research. So for example, students in our aerospace engineering program, they have access to our supersonic wind tunnel, which we are one of only five locations in the country to offer that type of opportunity. So there are opportunities throughout all of the different programs, such as business and nursing and all of that. So lots of opportunities. Talking a little bit about student involvement, we are the only Division I school here in the city of St. Louis. So we have 18 different Division I sports. We also have about 30 club sports and 50 intramural programs. We have over 150 student organizations for you to be involved in. Um, and they really range from culture, government, media, sports, um, service, Greek. We obviously have seven fraternities, seven sororities, and 10 multicultural fraternities. And so I would say probably about 20% of our students do participate in Greek life. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a campus in Madrid, Spain. Um, so depending, all of our majors have the flexibility to study abroad in Madrid, but we also, Madrid offers actually 15 different programs where you can actually go to Madrid for all four years. I would say most of our students do um, treat our Madrid campus as a traditional study abroad program because all of your classes transfer scholarship and financial aid go with you. If you don't want to go to Madrid, we have over 45 SLU approved programs where you get the same benefits all around the world, which is pretty fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about how to become a Billiken. So the SLU application, um, you can apply via the SLU application or Common App application. Both of them are absolutely free and we would just love to see you apply. You would submit your application and essay. We don't require additional essays on either of those. You can pick whichever essay on either of the applications that you apply for. Once you apply, um, you will um, submit your official transcripts. We are test optional um, through 2023. So we are in a test optional pilot for three years. Um, so we do not require your test scores. So you'll have the option to apply test inclusive or test optional. So the one thing we do require, of course, is your transcripts. If you are an international student, we do still require English proficiency. However, you have the option to submit those test scores if you've had the opportunity to take it and you feel that it is a good representation of your academic ability. We do award admission um, application or scholarships with test optional, so you don't need that to uh, be considered for any of our merit-based scholarships. They are ranging from about $8,000 to about $25,000 per year. So we would absolutely encourage you to apply. Um, in addition, we do encourage all of our students to apply by December 1st, as we are on a rolling basis. So physical therapy, occupational therapy, nursing, flight science, all have a strict December 1st deadline. So we would really encourage you to make sure you apply before that. We'll start releasing admission decisions um, November 1st, that's actually one of our favorite days in the office because we get to let everyone know that they are Billikens. Um, in addition, um, number four on this are letters of recommendation, resume, and interview. So those certainly are not required. Um, if you apply for any of our specialty application programs like our medical scholars program, 
our honors program, the, our presidential scholarship or a Martin Luther King Jr. scholarship, those require letters of recommendation. So if you submit them upon admission, they can be included for all of the different specialty programs that you apply for. Um, we do encourage you to submit your resume just because it is a holistic review process and the more we know, the better. Um, and then we will start offering admission interviews over the summer. So we would certainly encourage you to take advantage of that. That's an opportunity for you to learn more about SLU and for us to learn about you. If you would like to visit, my colleague will go ahead and put our visit website in the, um, in the chat. We are offering in-person visits and we'd love to have you come on campus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie, so much for presenting on St. Louis. All right, we've had two great schools. We have four to go. We see a lot of questions are coming in the Q&A, so thank you so much. Keep, keep uh, sharing those questions so our representatives can get you more direct info that you're curious about. And now we're going to be heading to learn about the University of Vermont. Ashley? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ashley Brown, and I serve as one of the regional associate directors in the Office of Admission at the University of Vermont. And my position is a little bit unique in the fact that I am stationed in the Chicago area all year round recruiting students for UVM. So I am really excited to be here today. Um, so uh, starting off here, just want to talk about our, our uh, student body size. We've got about 10,000 uh, undergraduate students on campus, and our average class size hovers just around 32. Um, we do have some larger lecture halls on campus. Our largest hall holds about 200 students, but um, those are most of the time capped out at around 175, and you won't have a lot of those classes throughout your time at UVM. So we really do work hard to keep those class sizes as small as possible. Uh, you'll also see on the left-hand side of the screen that about 73% of our students come from out of state, while about 27% uh, 27 of those students are native to Vermont. So this is for a couple of different reasons. One of the largest reasons is because Vermont is such a tiny state. Um, we don't really yield a lot of students from um, the actual state of Vermont, but we do get a lot of interest from across the country. So all in all, we represent about 47 different states and about 67 different countries. Some of our more popular programs on campus include business, psychology, environmental studies and sciences, political science, in addition to the health sciences as well. So if there are any students who are looking to study nursing or pre-med, we actually have a level one trauma center right in the heart of campus. So students are able to get a lot of fantastic hands-on work and clinical work before they graduate. All right, so this is my favorite slide here because uh, on the surface, some of our distinctive qualities uh, can seem a little bit contradictory. So for example, the University of Vermont is old. Uh, we were founded in 1791 and we are the fifth oldest institution in the New England area after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, and Brown. But we're also really new in the fact of constantly keeping pace with the changing world around us. So whether that be building new infrastructure on campus or instituting new academic majors, we are very cognizant of the ever changing society that we find ourselves in. Uh, it is also true that we are both big and small, so we're really big compared to some of those smaller uh, liberal arts institutions across the country, but also really small in comparison to some of those larger national research institutions as well. Uh, lastly, we are both urban and open, so we are located in the beautiful city of Burlington, uh, just about a 10-minute walk from the downtown area, and we're also very open in the fact that our natural landscape is very open. So we're framed by the green and Adirondack Mountains, and we sit right on Lake Champlain, which is the sixth largest freshwater lake in the United States. A little bit about our hands-on experience here. Uh, we like to call it experiential learning on campus. So um, experiential learning is a critical component to a UVM education. And about 98% of our students are uh, completing either a service learning opportunity, an internship opportunity, or a research opportunity before graduating from the University of Vermont. So again, this is kind of baked into a lot of our uh, curriculums, a lot of our majors, and it is a, a really important uh, part of the UVM experience. So you'll see on the right hand inside of the screen, some of the most recent internships and companies that our students have, have done internships with, but this is just an abbreviated list. Um, our career center, academic advisors, professors, and just via word of mouth, um, you know, that is the way that students are finding out about these, these opportunities. So um, we definitely do guide students um, in helping them to get these, these hands-on experiences. 
Okay, so this slide just talks a little bit about um, our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus. Um, we operate out of six common core ground values at UVM. So those include respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility. And we've taken these a step further and integrated them into our academic curriculum as well. So you'll see on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, some education requirements that you'll have to complete. So um, along with your academic major, you'll also have to um, complete those. And again, like I said, it is just a, a further um, uh, sort of uh, respect to our, our common ground uh, values that we go by on campus. Um, we also have our campus identity centers for any students who are looking for a smaller community within the larger context of UVM. So we have our Mosaic Center for Students of Color, our PRISM Center for any students who may identify as LGBTQIA+. We also have our Interfaith Center and our Women and Gender Equity Center. So our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion is something that we're very proud of and keep at the forefront of our minds at all times. Uh, a little bit about uh, residential life at UVM. Uh, all first year students are required to stay on campus for the first two years. Um, you do have the opportunity to stay off campus uh, junior and senior year, but we do have a number of students who opt to stay on for all four years. We also have a number of living and learning communities for students as well. And it really gives students the opportunity to hone in on a passion that they have outside of their academic major and also find community and make friends right off the bat at UVM. So due to time, I'm going to tell you um, to check out www.housing.edu um, uh, um, so uh, that you would be able to uh, check out a little bit more for um, our, our housing there. But we've got a lot of great dormitories on campus for students. All right, so this is a little bit about our academic profile. So we utilize a holistic review process for students when reviewing them for admission. Um, we have two separate ways that you can apply, either early action or regular decision. We don't have a preference as to when you apply. As long as you apply is really what we care about. Um, average GPA that we see from our students hovers around a 3.7. Uh, we were test optional this past recruitment cycle, and we do plan on being test optional um, this upcoming recruitment cycle. So um, if you guys have any additional questions, I know that's my time. Um, I will definitely put my information in the chat. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Ashley, for presenting on Vermont. All right, our next school will be Truman State University. <coughs> Hello, hello everyone. My name is Catherine. I work at Truman State University as the Northern Illinois uh, Region Counselor, and I'm hoping to tell you a little bit about what we're about here today. So let me go ahead and share my screen and let's get started. So there are a couple of things that I talk about with Truman State University. The first is uh, that we are in Kirksville, Missouri. So we are truly in the middle of the Midwest. Uh, and you can see kind of where we are placed in terms of like maybe some of the cities that you guys are familiar with. We are um, a liberal arts and sciences university, kind of a mid-sized university here in Kirksville. We have roughly 4,500 students at any given time. And just some fun facts we've got our mascot Spike the Bulldog uh, here in the middle of the screen. Um, we are a division two athletics school um, and I'll go into a little bit of what the liberal arts and sciences is about. So we are a public university that focuses on a liberal arts and sciences curriculum. So the goal of that is just to make sure that you graduate well-rounded. So you'll take a variety of courses here. A lot of the um, major programs here focused on getting you a wide array of skills in those areas. So a, while maybe like some of those classes initially you're like, I don't know why I'm learning Shakespeare when I'm a biology major, maybe that content knowledge might not be immediately relevant, but the soft skills that you pull from those classes are. So we hope to build these flexible thinking skills and adaptable thinking skills so that when you get into graduate school or your first job, you're ready to go. Um, the other part of the liberal arts and sciences is just hands-on experiences and work. So there are a lot of opportunities to get involved on campus with internship opportunities and research opportunities. Um, I think 
having these smaller classrooms that we do have here at Truman makes it easy for students to achieve those opportunities here. We do have 49 major programs. Some of the popular programs here at Truman are our health sciences um, and just science programs in general. We have, see a lot of students apply for biology, um, our health and exercise science programs, which can lead into our Masters of Athletic Training program. Um, we have a robust business administration uh, uh, program at our university and some students will go into accounting after that and then we also have uh, a robust education program here too that we're proud of. So we do have um, a majority of our programs are undergraduate programs with nine graduate programs um, and then along with that we have pre-professional programs. So if you're wanting to do like pre-med or pre-vet or pre-optometrist or something like that um, there are those tracks here at Truman to help prepare you for those opportunities. While you are on campus, you will also probably be involved in the club or organization, one of the best parts of college. We do have 230 student organizations. They can range anywhere from academic and honorary organizations, really good for study buddies, um, anywhere to like, we do have Greek life, 20% of our students are in Greek life and they range from um, fraternities and sororities to community service uh, related for uh, sororities. And we also have um, student government and student activities board. So if you're interested in event planning or if you're interested in kind of making those decisions on campus and passing laws and kind of getting that experience, that's good too. I do like to say we have a group for everybody because we have a special interest group called plants exclamation point and it stands for plant lovers also need to socialize and i feel like if we've got that group we've got a group for everybody um but definitely a great place to get involved and if you are uh interested in athletics whether that's laid back you can do intramurals or if you want to get involved in one of our 16 varsity athletic teams that's available for you too some of the outcomes that I like to look at, I have a teaching background, and so these are the things that matter most to me. 97% um, of our students receive financial aid, and we'll look at uh, cost here in a second to see how that kind of makes sense. Um, and I think that helps with uh, students graduating without student loan debt. And so over 50% of our students do. 71% of our students graduate after five years. We put a five-year graduation rate because a lot of our students will go into like the master's of accounting or the master's of education program. So we put that one and it is the highest in Missouri. And this is the one that I like most. 87% of our students are employed or in grad school after graduation. So really helps me go to sleep at night knowing that our students are in the place that they need to be after graduation. And we are the number one public school in the Midwest for 24 years running, hoping to be for next year too. Um, I realize that uh, you are maybe going into your application season here soon. So you guys are looking at the out of state cost, which is that sticker price is around 25,000. Um, and then in order to get some scholarships here, you want to apply to Truman. So your application to Truman is your application for scholarships. We are test flexible this year and are looking to be test flexible probably next year. So if you are unable to access a test date or um, would not like to submit one, you are free to do so. When you are submitting your application, though, highly recommend to submit that essay and activities list because we are a holistic review admissions process. So we will look at everything you send in and those application materials, the essay and the activities list are important. Uh, for deciding, uh, awarding those scholarships. If you guys do have any questions, I realize I went through that a little bit quickly, please feel free to email me and uh, check out our Instagram and our TikTok. Uh, we're coming out with some fun things. So it was nice seeing you guys and I uh, will go on to the next person, which is, this is the time where I exit out and then. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, Catherine. I'm here to help. Thank you so much for sharing Truman State with all of us today. All Thank right, you. we're heading off to learn next uh, about Pepperdine University. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll be sharing my screen now. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Cutie White, and I serve as a mission counselor here at Pepperdine University. Um, so Pepperdine is a private Christian liberal arts university located in Malibu, California. You can see a photo of our campus here on the screen. Uh, Malibu is a smaller surfer beach town. It's a lot less traffic than the local Los Angeles area that we're so close to, but we are about 20 minutes from downtown Santa Monica. 
about 40 minutes from downtown Los Angeles, making there a lot of opportunities available for our students. Um, but here in Malibu, we have the Pacific Ocean in our front yard, the Santa Monica Mountain Range in our backyard, um, and we're really proud of our location here. Here's a picture of our Seaver College, which is our undergraduate school. So Pepperdine does have five schools. We have a Grazie View School of Business, the Caruso School of Law, a School of Public Policy, and the Graduate School of Education and Psychology. Um, but the school that you all will all be applying to is the Seaver Undergraduate College. Um, Seaver has a total population of 3,400 students, so it definitely is that tight-knit community on our campus, um, small class sizes, as I'll talk about later on as well. So I know I mentioned how Pepperdine is a liberal arts university, and I'm sure many of you students have heard this term before, um, but at Pepperdine, it essentially means that you will take a broad range of different curriculum courses through our general education program, um, regardless of what major you choose to apply to. Um, and please keep in mind that we do not admit students based on their major. You have the opportunity to freely change your major, double major, add a minor throughout your time at Pepperdine. I um, really don't need to declare that until the end of your sophomore year. Um, but at Pepperdine, we do have 44 majors and 41 minors, our top five majors by popularity are business administration, psychology, biology, sports medicine, and economics. And um, we do have an average class size of just 19 students and a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one. Um, and additionally, a fun fact is that 35% of our faculty actually live on our Malibu campus. And this is a really unique statistic for a university. Um, it's very common for students to go over to their professor's homes for dinner or for a study group. Um, so they really work to invest in students' lives, not only in the classroom, but really spiritually. So socially, personally, and professionally as well. And I also mentioned how we are a Christian university. So here at Pepperdine, we are affiliated with the Churches of Christ. Um, we're not governed or funded by the Churches of Christ, but we do remain a distinctly Christian institution. And this plays out in several ways of student life on campus. Um, please keep in mind, though, you don't have to be Christian to attend Pepperdine. About 70% of our student body identifies with the Christian faith. About 30% do not. But something that we do ask our students to be is willing and open to engage in faith-based conversations. And um, this is because we do have three general education religion courses that all students are required to take as part of that general education curriculum, as well as a thing called the convocation series. So this is where we ask students to attend 14 convocation events each semester. These are really community builder events. They can range from um, maybe more formal church services to small groups to one-on-one -on -one mentorship with professor. And one of my personal favorites events we offer is called Surf Chapel, a picture here on the screen where our students go to the beach on Wednesday mornings, do a little Bible study and worship time on the beach, and then go surfing right afterwards. And there are also so many different things happening on Pepperdine's campus. Um, we have over 60 different student-led clubs and organizations. We do have Greek life on our campus. We have five fraternities and we have eight sororities. And we're also NCAA Division I for sports, which is something I really love about Pepperdine is we are that smaller school population-wise, but we still compete at the Division I level. And then kind of another distinguishing factor of Pepperdine is our international program. So if you've done any Pepperdine research, you've probably seen something about our international programs pop up. Um, but because we have been consistently ranked in the top five in the nation when it comes to study abroad. Um, so about 80 percent of Pepperdine students will study abroad at least once during their time at Pepperdine. And what makes these programs so unique is that we have six actual Pepperdine campuses around the globe. So in London, England, Heidelberg, Germany, Lausanne, Switzerland, Florence, Italy, Washington, D.C., and Buenos Aires, Argentina. And these are all actual Pepperdine campuses in these locations. We don't pair with another university. You just go over with Pepperdine faculty, Pepperdine students to a Pepperdine owned facility. And because of this, students will pay the same tuition and the same room and board overseas as they would on our Malibu campus. Um, it's most common for our students to spend their entire sophomore year studying abroad in one of these international campuses. Um, and we really, really just value students to be able to grow um, culturally and globally while studying abroad during their time at Pepperdine. And so just briefly want to dive into the application process. So Pepperdine, we do have a holistic review process, like what a lot of my friends and colleagues at other institutions have mentioned today. And um, so at Pepperdine, we do have the, we are through the common application. So this is how you apply to Pepperdine. And through that, we'll look at the activities you've been involved in, the essays you'll write for us, one academic letter of recommendation. And then we has also have optional interviews as part of our application process. Um, but the majority of that review is based on your academics. So with that, we are looking at your trends script and unweighted GPA. And then please note that we are test optional for at least the next two years. So if you're applying for fall of 2022 or fall of 2023, we are test optional, uh, meaning you will not be penalized in any way if you choose not to submit your test scores. 
here on the screen are some of our deadlines coming up for this fall. So we have an early action deadline of November 1st and a regular decision deadline of January 15th. And there's no difference on how we review your application, whether you apply early action or regular decision. Um, and lastly, we would really love for you all to continue to connect with us. Our campus did recently open again for in-person tours, which is very exciting, but we have several virtual events that are happening. We'd really encourage you to reach out to your admission counselor as well. So I'll put some more follow-up information in the chat. Um, but thank you all so much for your time and thanks for listening today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie, for sharing Pepperdine. All right, we've heard from five great schools. We've got one more to go. There's tons of questions in the Q&A, so definitely um, get ready to learn all about the University of Miami and think of those questions you want to ask. So Charles, take it away. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Greatly appreciate your, your hosting and facilitation for today. Students, uh, good afternoon. I'm really excited to be with you today and represent the University of Miami, um, not only representing the institution, but also uh, the regional officer in this area in Chicago. So I hope that you are buckled up and ready to go just to hear a little bit about our institution. So we are a medium sized institution uh, located actually about six miles outside of downtown Miami. Uh, but the main thing that I wanna draw your attention to on this particular slide is that 75% of our classes are 27 or fewer. Yes, 75% of our classes are 27 or fewer. So it's not just that we are a medium-sized institution, but what is the context behind that? Students coming from all over the world, uh, studying a variety of different things. Yes, a lot of students even coming from Chicago. Um, so what this means for you is that you're going to have a great deal of community um, even before you step foot on the campus. 60% roughly, give or take, of our students come from outside of the state of Florida, so we're not just a Florida institution. Um, and that reflection of the cultural immersion that you'll experience uh, within Miami is seen on the campus with many different languages you'll hear as you walk through, but also over 45% of our students uh, being a part of underrepresented populations, right? So it allows for a diverse experience um, for you to be able to connect not only with people who look like you, uh, but have similar experiences, but can also give you a light into other areas that you might not be familiar with. This even lends itself into the academic diversity that we have as well. So students uh, having the opportunity to 180 different majors in our nine undergraduate schools and colleges that you'll see here, our largest being the College of Arts and Sciences. Similar to many of my colleagues before, uh, we have a direct admit program. So when you apply to the University of Miami, you're applying generally, and then you're automatically admitted into the school or college of your choice which means that you're gonna be able to take classes right away to be qualified for internships, research opportunities, which will help you obtain through our TOPL Career Center. So the resources are there for you to be successful. But the most unique aspect to the University of Miami by far is our Cognates Program of General Education. I, I can imagine that you already have an idea of maybe what you want to study, but maybe you're not solidified in it and that's Okay, right? So we have three areas of study here that all of our majors fall under, but you have the autonomy to choose the other two sections not covered by your major to then explore. Or maybe you don't want to come in with a major decided yet. You can come in undecided and not declaring the major till the end of your sophomore year. So you have some time to mix and match, mingle as well, um, both from an academic standpoint, but also with the students and faculty alike. So the guinea pig we have here is Sebastian the Ibis taking aerospace engineering to cover the STEM cognate. So that's his major, but then it's also chosen uh, to take a philosophy cognate, but maybe for you, you wanna take music or you wanna take history. Um, so that could cover that section. And then you'll take another cognate, which is a grouping of three courses um, for people in society, but maybe your major is in psychology. So it covers people in society. It can mix and match again, based upon what you and your interests. So you really do have that flexibility built in, not only from an exploration of the people around you, but your academic experience as well, all accentuated by our location. So I mentioned 
We're in Cora Gables, uh, which is a suburbs just outside of downtown. You can take the metro right off of Metro Stop directly into the city where you will be immersed in a cultural hotbed. As our president likes to say, we are in the middle of the Americas, the southernmost point uh, close to Central and South America. And so, yes, on a day that's beautiful like today in Chicago, but you can get that all year round, 72 degrees average temperature, in addition to the fact that you have uh, some amazing extracurricular activities from the festivals to the food. I'm currently hungry right now, I have to be honest with you, and all of the different uh, things that go along with that uh, to even do the sports. We have our D1 sports. That you can support free admission to all of those games, but then also the athletics um, of the professional sports teams also. So it, it helps you to have this combination, both of the cultural immersion, uh, but also some fun with your academic experience. I want to tell you that we're exclusively on the Common application, um, which allows you to apply to a lot of different schools at once. And another benefit to this is we don't have any uh, other supplemental items that you have to submit for your consideration for scholarships. So you're automatically considered for scholarships when you apply to UM. Yes, you'll notice on here that it says optional for spring and fall 2021 because we're still waiting for our administration to make that decision. We hope that we'll continue to be test optional going forward, but they're still making that determination. And when we get your information from today, we'll be able to send you that as soon as that decision is made. But we have a holistic review uh, that looks at your entire application process so looking at your transcript, how you've been able to challenge yourself, um, but also the recommendations, extracurricular, um, all of these things help to support that core value of your academic experience. And again, how you've taken advantage of your offerings. Last but certainly not least is our deadlines coming up August 1st. Uh, besides the deadlines that you see here, August 1st is the one you need to remember. That's when the common application opens up for those of you who are rising seniors. Um, and so you'll see here we have several options to choose from. Early decision, it's a binding component, but you don't have to. It's up to you what works best for you and your situation. I'm going to put my information in the chat and hopefully can connect with you a little bit more. Thank you all for listening. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charles, for sharing the University of Miami. All right, we have a lot of questions in the Q&A. We have a lot of great information that's in the chat box. We wanna make sure that everyone watching is able to grab that. Um, so while we're doing that, we're gonna take advantage of our last few minutes and I'm gonna invite each uh, school to have a representative come back on camera um, to get a little more information. So now we know that Noble students get so much awesome information about the college search process and the decision, but we also have this amazing group of Rows right here um, who love their job, love helping students and their families get to know their schools and navigate this process so that um, it adds to it being a fun adventure and not just an overwhelming experience, but something really exciting um, as everyone looks for what's next after high school. So for this group of juniors, I'd love to hear from each of you a top tip or piece of advice that you have for navigating the college search. It can be in general or even during this time of COVID that we've been in um, and are in. Um, and we're going to go in the exact same order. As the school ahead of you finishes, just feel free as that representative wraps up to turn on your camera and answer the question. I won't call on you all. And we'll just go one through six. So we'll be starting with Purdue first. Hey, Susie, you're muted. Could you unmute and start your answer again? Don't worry. We've there all we been go. There in Zoom. We know. I clicked and it didn't work. So my top tip is to watch deadlines. And so as you just heard um, from the six schools today, we all have different dates and different deadlines. So just make sure that you are keeping track of those important deadlines uh, for each school that you are going to submit an application to. Great. And so my tip is that each school will have an admission counselor that is assigned to your school. And we're really here to help you navigate that process and be your advocate. So please reach out to us. We want to hear from you and we're ready to help you through this. Um, I'll piggyback a little bit off what Stephanie said, just to utilize your resources, but also just try not to get overwhelmed by the process. Uh, you know, you guys are bright, smart students who are going to be admitted into wonderful colleges, um, but, you know, definitely utilize us, utilize your college counselor in addition to um, uh, us as admission professionals as well to help mitigate some of the stress through the process. 
I would say that if you're looking at a lot of different colleges to keep an eye on their websites, because a lot of us will have either in person visit opportunities or even online like fairs, just kind of like this one, but there are opportunities to meet with professors in those events as well. And so talking to them can be really fun too, just to see uh, if you feel like you can envision yourself in those programs. So I would say that. I'll jump in and say that I think that to try not to um, limit yourself when it comes to the college search process. So um, keep an open mind with a lot of different types of institutions, whether they're large or private and smaller, um, maybe big sports schools or maybe big Greek led schools, maybe some smaller schools with smaller class sizes. So don't limit yourself when you're looking at different schools and try to research as many different types of opportunities as you can to see what schools might fit you the best. Lastly, I'll just say, remember to enjoy the moment that you're in. Um, the college process can be daunting at times and you can forget to enjoy your senior year of high school. Um, so enjoy it, take advantage of all the opportunities and, and the other things will fall into place. Awesome, I love this. I love the range of practical and also like philosophical. I hope for the students that are watching today that this is also giving you insight that, you know, these admissions officers are real people who love what they do, are really passionate, um, they want to answer all those questions. There really is nothing too small. They want to build those relationships. I think sometimes it can seem like they're scary and it's far away and they make these decisions, but really they are here to get to know all of you and work with you. So I hope that their energy and passion for their students' opportunities on campus in and out of the classroom really shine today. I know six minutes is fast, so this is just a sneak peek. Definitely be sure to follow up and get more questions answered and start building those relationships and exploring because um, you've gotten to learn about some amazing places today. All right, so we are now at the end of our time together, uh, which it just flies by so fast. So first of all, thank you to all of our counselors, our admissions counselors that are here. You all and your colleagues do an amazing job. And I just appreciate the information and the energy you brought to today. Um, and again, thank you students for taking the time out and being here and learning about these great programs. When you close your window, there's going to be a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. I promise students, it is really short and easy. You can answer those questions. This is again, just one of many sessions that are being hosted. We hope you've enjoyed some and are ready for our last round coming up following this session as well. If you haven't already signed up, you can still do so. Also know that in a week's time, you'll find this session's recording as well as all of the session recordings at stratascan.com slash noble. That's that same website for registration. Thanks again, everyone, for taking time out of your day to be here. Best wishes in your college search and decision. It is a fun and journey and a great adventure ahead for all of you. So best wishes and have a great day. Bye. Happy